Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone. There, in their presence, he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun, and his cloak became as white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, and they were talking to him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow, and from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Listen to him. When he heard this, the disciples fell on their faces, overcame with fear. But Jesus came up and touched them. Stand up, he said. Do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one but only Jesus. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus gave them this order. Tell no one about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today we are celebrating the second Sunday of Lent. And our theme is our transfigured Lord. Now, what is the message and the lessons we can learn from this gospel passage? It is about the constant transformation, beginning with the call of Abraham. They came to us in the first reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, Abraham was not Abraham. He was called Abram. Now, in the Jewish tradition, when a person changed his name, in this case, from Abram to Abraham, he is undergoing a transformation. He was born Abram, but God made him Abraham. You know the story well about Abraham. He was asked by God to leave his hometown to go to a foreign land. And God said, I will give you a new land. I will make you the father of a multitude, as many as the sand on the shores, on the beach, and as many as the stars in the heaven. Abraham believed in that promise made to him by God. Of course, as the story went on, he went through a lot of challenges. The biggest one was God gave him a son, Isaac. He and his wife, Sarah, was actually in advanced age. The childbearing years of Sarah was over. But God said, don't worry, I will give you a son. And true enough, he got a son. But God tested him and asked him to offer his one and only son as a sacrifice. Abraham obeyed. He passed the test with fine colors. And for that, he is known to us as the father of faith. And from there, Abraham became Abraham and became a good friend of God. So the transformation of Abraham was complete. And the lessons and the message that we are posed today continues in the second reading. God calls and God enlightens us. Every single one of us has been called by God. Our transformation continues just like Abraham. If you look at your life of faith, you realize that from the beginning, 
you grow from strength to strength, overcoming crisis after crisis, overcoming obstacle after obstacle. Each time we succeed, we become stronger. We become closer to God. And hopefully, we become friend with God. And our transformation takes place. And this transformation does not end. It continues until our last day on earth. The final transformation is when we go back to God to enjoy eternal life, kingdom life. And finally, the final transformation takes place in the gospel story about the transfiguration when Jesus appeared before the disciples, radiant. Jesus gave his disciples, Peter and James and his brother John, a glimpse of his glory as a second person of the Holy Trinity, the Son of God. That is his true self, the divine Son of God. It was just a glimpse. Of course, the disciples at that point don't understand what was going on. But Jesus wants want them to know that this is who I really am. Now, Peter's reaction is similar to our human reaction. Peter offered to build three tents, one for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. It is human nature for us to want to stay where we are. We don't want to change, we don't want to move, we don't want to transform. We are familiar with what we are used to. We don't like to go to places that we are not familiar with. We don't like to become people that we have not yet arrived. So therefore, we would like to stay exactly where we are, even though we perhaps feel that, well, I should change, I should move forward. Moving forward into the unknown is uncomfortable. And because of that, we don't want to move. We don't want to change. Even though the Holy Spirit invites us, lead us, coax us, but still we don't want because we like the familiar. You know, last week, Father Francis mentioned about sin. And he said sin is not the end. Sin gives us hope. Hope in God. With God, He can and He will transform us. Some of us, when we feel that we are sinful, we feel that I am sinful. I can't be any better. The message of Father Francis last week ties in into this theme. Transformation is possible. Transformation is necessary. And transformation is the grace of God given to us. So God prompts us to keep moving, to keep changing, to keep transforming toward his plan for each and every one of us, which ultimately is eternal life, the kingdom life. Now Jesus show us the way, Jesus' path, from the Son of God, he became man. Lived among us, preached the good news to us, fulfilled his mission on earth, to the passion, his resurrection, and his resurrection. And through his ascension, he returned to the Father. Now Jesus did all that through hardship, through obedience to his Father. He showed us that if I can do it, so can you. So the passion and cross of Jesus is also our passion and our cross. Jesus' resurrection and ascension is also our resurrection and ascension. So today we celebrate the theme, our transfigured Lord. He invites us to join him, to transform, and to one day be transfigured. So let us move forward 
in hope, in grace, and in obedience. Amen.